Good morning and welcome to the third day of the NNP Symposium. Uh, this morning we have a presentation from Len Augsberger, who you've probably seen in some of the other presentations facilitating. Uh, Len, you can go ahead and unmute and turn on your video whenever you are ready. So Len is the project coordinator for the Newman Numismatic Portal, so we'll be hearing about some of the new things that have been going on over there. Uh, we are affiliated with the NNP and all of the presentations from the symposium will are, have been recorded and will be uploaded to the NNP about two weeks after the symposium. So there'll be an announcement on our homepage about that on our social media and we'll be sending out an email to anyone who's on the email list. So let me make sure. Okay, yeah, Len, you should be able to go ahead and start your screen share. If you have any issues, yep, there we go. Okay. All right. Looks like Answers. we got it there. Yep. <laughs> All right, let's get going here. Well, welcome to uh, day three of uh, Newman Numismatic Portal Symposium. Uh, we've had a lot of great presentations, a lot of uh, great feedback from the listeners and uh, excellent questions from the audience. So uh, it's been, uh, the engagement has been great to see. And uh, we're definitely going to continue this forum in the future. And uh, We'll uh, announce that accordingly. All right, well, uh, for this session, we're gonna be looking at uh, Newman Numismatic Portal and uh, just talk about the organization of the project and uh, where it's been and where it's, where it's headed. I'm trying to advance to the next slide. Let's... Uh, for some reason, it's not advancing. So I'm going to uh, switch out here and share the deck directly. Oh, wait, there it goes. All right, so let's go back to the beginning. Um, uh, NNP uh, was uh, first envisioned in uh, 2014. Uh, and uh, Washington University put out a press release in December of 2014 with a statement from Eric P. Newman uh, indicating his intention to uh, make the literature and images of, of numismatics, especially American numismatics, uh, freely available uh, to everyone on a free, free and forever basis uh, with uh, an eye towards uh, making all these digitally available and uh, also noting that uh, with the sale of the Newman collection, uh, Epnus was in a position to uh, go ahead and uh, fund and spearhead this project. All right, so what is Newman Numismatic Portal? Uh, it is a uh, centralized online, freely open uh, digital repository uh, for American and other numismatic information resources uh, with the capability to uh, search across all of it at once. And what Newman Portal contains, uh, we divide our content into four or five major categories. Uh, auction catalogs, uh, we have about 10,000 available on Newman Portal, um, representing uh, many of the major American auction houses and uh, are also starting to add uh, the UK and British auction houses. Uh, periodicals, we have about 15,000 uh, representing uh, American numismatic periodicals uh, published by major institutions such as the American Numismatic Association or the American Numismatic Society, but also a great number of publications of local, state, and regional numismatic organizations. Uh, in particular, um, a number of the uh, state numismatic organizations have a rather rich history um, and by digitizing their publications we've been able to capture that. Uh, multimedia, primarily video, um, we have about 3,000 items. Um, we'll talk uh, later about the major uh, content in that collection which is the uh, David Lazo video library. Archive items, we have about 10,000 uh, representing uh, a large amount of content from the Eric P. Newman research papers and also 
archival items from the National Archives, uh, where we digitize in several locations. We'll talk about that later. And then reference books, uh, we have about a thousand items represented. So uh, why can we, why do we need NNP and why is this not all on Google already? Well, uh, the short answer is we do things that Google doesn't do. Um, so when Google announced their Google Books project, they backed up their trucks to major university libraries and just started scanning everything. Well, it turns out uh, major university libraries uh, simply don't have all the numismatic resources. Um, the numismatic resources tend to be uh, in collectors' hands or in uh, institutions such as the American Numismatic Society. Uh, and if you want a run of plated Chapman catalogs, uh, it, as great as the Harvard University Library is, they, they don't have them. Um, they're, they're all in other places. Um, so we can, by concentrating on one, one small area, uh, we can actually do a much better job than uh, somebody who's trying to cover everything. And of course, what, what Google does is amazing, um, but it doesn't have a specific numismatic focus. All right, so the rationale for NNP, uh, basically the world is changing. Uh, we've just seen a revolution in uh, uh, digital access and, and digital content and uh, it's time for numismatics to get on board. And it has been in many ways. Uh, you know, we see all the major auction houses have these amazing platforms that uh, let you bid from anywhere in the world. Uh, so certainly we are taking advantage of, of technology. Uh, since the epidemic started, you've seen literally uh, hundreds of numismatic uh, presentations available by, by Zoom and uh, other uh, meeting sharing platforms. Uh, so we are getting on board. But with respect to numismatic research, uh, we also need to get on board there. So uh, hence the, uh, the NNP. All right, so let's look at how we're structured. Um, there's a couple ways of looking at this. One is uh, in terms of the funding, and then the second is in terms of the IT. But let's look at the, the funding first. Um, uh, it all starts in the upper left corner with EPNES, which is the Eric P. Newman Numismatic Education Society. Uh, this is a foundation uh, formed by Eric Newman in 1959 uh, with the, the purpose of uh, numismatic education, and uh, it's accomplished that through outreach efforts such as the Newman Money Museum and uh, grants to specific grants to individuals for research purposes. Uh, and uh, of course, the largest thing uh, that, that it funds in terms of numismatics is the Newman Numismatic Portal. So uh, most of the funding goes to Washington University. Uh, which uh, EPNES has funded the project with a series of grants. And then the project is administered uh, within Washington University in St. Louis, uh, more particularly within Olin Library, uh, which is the, the central library in the middle of campus. And then the Newman Portal is a project within Olin Library. So I am a, as project coordinator, I'm a full-time employee of the university. And uh, we also have one other person, uh, Kelly West at the university within the library who uh, is also full-time dedicated to the project. All right, and then within NNP itself, uh, we contract out uh, various tasks to different vendors and as well as do work ourselves. Uh, our main vendor is Internet Archive, which serves as the repository for uh, Newman Portal. And uh, our software development is done by Notch 8, a San Diego company. Uh, we have contractors. Uh, Focus Archive is uh, Wayne Omron's company. Uh, he does uh, consulting work for us. And then we also uh, contract out other photography and scanning work as needed. All right, so that's the uh, funding view. And then let's look at how we're structured from an IT perspective. 
Um, so uh, it starts with where the content comes from, and that's the uh, left column uh, that you see there. Um, and content is coming from scanning operations, and it's coming from uh, content that's acquired electronically. And of course, more and more content now is born digital, uh, so we acquire it directly in that format. But the scanning, which we do in several locations, uh, is also critical. And, and the reason for that is that the things we scan have never been scanned before. They've never been available digitally before, and uh, we're making that happen. So uh, we do scanning at uh, Washington University in St. Louis, and uh, that's been very limited since the epidemic. Uh, for many months, we did not have physical access to campus. Uh, we now have limited physical access, but um, we're not able at this point to employ students to do scanning, um, which we, we did for several years. I'm sure that'll resume in the future, but um, obviously we have to get past the epi epidemic first. So uh, Washington U has been a little bit limited in terms of what we can do. Uh, the American Numismatic Society, um, as of about a month ago, uh, is back on uh, full-time. So we have a full-time scanner there and um, have been able to resume our, our scanning activities at ANS. So that's been great. Um, that's back to normal. Um, the National Archive scanning um, is completely stopped right now. Um, the uh, National Archives locations remain closed, so we don't have uh, physical access to the material. Uh, we've been doing other things to develop that collection, and we'll, we'll talk about that later, but in terms of getting new material, uh, we're blocked on that right now. And I, I'm sure uh, once we get past the epidemic, that'll reopen. Um, but uh, we just have to wait until that point. All right, so all of this scanning, everything uh, acquired digitally, uh, it all goes into Internet Archive, which is our, our main repository. Um, and Internet Archive uh, archives many other things as well. Um, and we are uh, one of their contributing partners. Um, so then we move into the, the center chart um, and we look at the Newman Portal site directly. So uh, we have all, all our scan documents are on Internet Archive. Uh, and then we have some databases internally on Newman Portal as well. Our image collections, our uh, biographical collection, uh, the uh, NNP dictionary and uh, uh, auction prices realized uh, service that we have included there. And then uh, the site itself pr provides uh, search across all of this. And uh, it also provides a, a taxonomy or a hierarchy of all the information. So any document that's added to Newman Portal has to be classified. It's gotta be a periodical or an auction catalog or an archive item. And then we drill down even further from there. If it's an auction catalog, it has to be associated with uh, some certain auction house. So uh, by having that hierarchy, uh, you make things uh, much more discoverable. Okay, so uh, some of the collection stats over the last few years, uh, steady growth uh, across all categories. Uh, the one I really like to see is the one on the bottom, that's our, our contributors. So we have a lot of uh, individuals and organizations that have uh, contributed content toward Newman Portal. Um, and uh, that's where the real growth will be in the future. Um, we've done a lot of work in terms of getting all the core items onto uh, Newman Portal. So you have a a complete run of the numismatist. You have catalogs from the major auction houses. Um, so that core is in there. Um, and uh, over the long term, the real growth is going to be uh, what do individual contributors put into it in terms of uh, new content that they, they are creating. All right, so if we look at uh, content by source, um, the main thing that we see here is that the portion that we acquire electronically is growing. 
uh, virtually any new content today, auction catalogs, periodicals, newsletter, they're all born digital. Um, there's nobody uh, creating these on, on a typewriter anymore. Um, so because they're born digital, we don't need to scan them. We can incorporate them directly. Uh, so that's, that's great. It's a, a, a great way to increase the collection. And of course, during the epidemic, uh, since we've uh, not been able to scan, everything's had to have been uh, created electronically. So that trend will continue. Um, and then the, the red band is our uh, ANS scanning, uh, which uh, has been pretty, pretty much steady the whole time. And then uh, the blue band is our scanning at St. Louis. Um, we do have more bandwidth. It's, traditionally, we've had more bandwidth at St. Louis because we've had, had access to uh, student help. And uh, we can have a couple students working at a time, uh, flipping the pages on the scanner. Uh, whereas at uh, ANS, we have uh, just one full-time staff. All right, so if we look at our contributors um, coming from uh, several different areas, a lot of specialty clubs, um, if your favorite club is not listed there, they may, may very well be a partner, but um, I couldn't list everyone on one slide. Um, a lot of the regional organizations, uh, Central States, for example, uh, has contributed their uh, back issue journals. And then a lot of individual contributors. Um, uh, and again, there's uh, far too many to list, but I'm giving a sampling here. All right, and then uh, commercial contributors. Uh, these form uh, a real uh, backbone or core to the site. So Stax Bowers, for example, uh, started business in 1935. Since that time has created over a thousand auction sale catalogs, all of which we have scanned. Uh, just a, a tremendous archive uh, across all areas of numismatics that, that they've been involved in. Uh, Kagan's uh, began in the 1950s uh, with uh, uh, 300 auction sale catalogs. We've acquired all of those, uh, courtesy of uh, Dan Hamelberg, a prominent literature collector in, uh, in Illinois. Uh, Coin Dealer Newsletter, um, again, uh, important source of commercial information since uh, the early 1960s. And uh, those have been scanned as well. And then institutionally, obviously, um, one of our biggest partners, of course, is American Numismatic Society, where we have uh, a full-time scanner set up and uh, access to their just incomparable library uh, and archival holdings. Uh, the American Numismatic Association uh, has allowed us to uh, uh, present the numismatist uh, since 1888. So we've got almost all of those on Newman Portal since uh, through 2002, I believe. Uh, National Archives is another important source of information. And the National Archives is especially important because a lot of their material has never been looked at uh, before by numismatists. So uh, uh, Bob Julian uh, in, in the 60s was a pioneer in pulling information out of National Archives. And in recent years, uh, Roger Burdett's been extremely active in developing National Archives content. Um, I, I have a special place in my heart for this because there's so much in original information there uh, that, that remains to be mined. So we're doing what we can to help develop that. So um, we had a, a, a scanner working uh, full time at, at National Archives until the epidemic. Um, in particular, working on the general correspondence group there. And uh, once the National Archives reopens, we hope to uh, re-engage with that work. In the meantime, what we've been doing is a lot of transcription work based on material previously scanned. Uh, a lot of the National Archives material is all handwritten, uh, so it's not digitally searchable until it's all transcribed. And we'll never transcribe all of it, um, but we're trying to pick the higher priority places um, and uh, make that material available. 
All right, at Washington University itself, uh, we have uh, the Eric P. Newman Library. Uh, now, the frontline portion of that library was sold in uh, November of 2018 via Heritage Auctions, uh, but there's uh, a very large collection remaining, um, and a lot of his research papers are still there. Um, so we have a large amount of material to work off there. In addition, uh, Washington University itself is a federal deposit library, uh, meaning that uh, it has a excellent collection of US government publications. And there's actually a lot of numismatic content in the US government publications. There's annual mint reports, uh, treasury reports, uh, brochures that the mints produce for visitors, um, all sorts of interesting things. So uh, we've been able to scan a lot of that material there. The St. Louis Federal Reserve Library has also been uh, a useful resource. Uh, they have an online database called Fraser, uh, which contains a lot of uh, US government publications already in digital format. Um, and they've allowed us to uh, copy a lot of that content into Newman Portal. Uh, the Museum of American Finance in uh, New York uh, has uh, a publication, uh, Financial History, that uh, they've allowed us to include in Newman Portal as well. All right, so let's talk more specifically about American Numismatic Society. Uh, we have a full-time scanner base there, um, and they've uh, graciously provided space uh, for us and access to their collection. Um, and uh, Newman Portal sponsors uh, this uh, individual working at uh, Internet Archive, uh, sorry, working at ANS. Um, they officially work for Internet Archive, but we uh, contract Internet Archive to do this work. So uh, a few things that we've uh, scanned at ANS, uh, the Virgil brand ledgers uh, have been a great project. So. Uh, brand uh, built uh, arguably the largest and most important U.S. collection ever formed uh, in the late 19th and early 20th centuries um, because it never appeared, there, there was no great series of sales after he died that uh, showcased the collection. So uh, in terms of numismatic history, he might be uh, a little bit shortchanged. Uh, there were parts of it uh, that came out much later um, uh, presented by uh, uh, Bowers and Ruddy, um, but uh, no long series of sales like Ford or Newman. So uh, regardless, uh, Brand uh, assiduously recorded uh, his collection contents in a series of uh, 25 or so oversized ledgers. And uh, these ledgers are very useful for pedigree research. So in any case, uh, we have scanned those ledgers, made them available. Um, and a lot of people who otherwise might not be able to visit ANS have been able to access those. And they're uh, creating various finding aids for these. So uh, it, it's been great to see that uh, content get developed that way. Uh, the New Netherlands Archives, a uh, major auction house operating out of New York in the 1950s and 60s. Um, the Garrett family papers uh, related to the formation of that important American collection that was sold uh, around 1980. And then uh, we've scanned all the early American auction sale catalogs at ANS. And uh, we're currently working on, on the uh, Chapman Brothers uh, business correspondence uh, that ANS holds. Now, the ANS has an online library catalog uh, called Donum. And what we've been able to do for the material that we've scanned at ANS, we've been able to link those scans to the library catalog. So, uh, anyone who's looking at the library catalog uh, online to see what might be in the ANS library. Uh, very often we'll be able to find a link to the actual document. Um, and of course, the advantage of that is it, it saves you the trouble of actually having to visit ANS and having the library pull the book off the shelf and, and refile it later. Um, and just uh, considerably simplifies um, 
the access to the collection. So we've got about uh, 8,000 documents are linked uh, to the uh, online library catalog right now. All right, so this is what the, the Virgil Brand ledgers actually look like, just the sample page, um, uh, 32 bound volumes. Um, I'm not sure the scan here conveys the, the physical size of the volumes. They're very impressive in person. Um, but uh, now with the online access, um, you don't have to handle those books unless uh, you'd like to see them. And of course they are uh, just from a historical uh, perspective, quite interesting artifacts. But in terms of the content itself, you can uh, get at that from the comfort of your own home. All right, the uh, Garrett family archives uh, includes uh, correspondence and uh, inventory of that collection uh, formed uh, in late 18th and, or sorry, late 19th and, and 20th centuries. Uh, and this is uh, a page uh, listing the uh, United States uh, 1792 patterns in that collection. All right, and our current project is this business correspondence of the Chapman brothers, uh, Philadelphia dealers, uh, active uh, late 19th and early 20th centuries. Uh, we have uh, 1,800 different correspondence uh, through the letter R. Um, and uh, we're, 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 we're proceeding through those. And uh, this project actually should be wrapped up in a couple of months at the most. Um, but this is uh, a really interesting archive because they have correspondence with all the prominent American collectors and dealers. And uh, it, it's, it's a great source of history for the period. Um, so this is something that uh, again, it's original source material, and I think there are a lot of stories uh, out of this correspondence that, uh, that remain to be mined and published. So uh, this will be uh, a great source for numismatic scholarship going forward. All right, um, and then uh, at National Archives, um, the National Archives hold uh, archival material from the U.S. Mint, from the U.S. Treasury. Um, our collection was actually seeded by Bob Julian. He did, uh, he, he, he contracted uh, some scanning work uh, at the Philadelphia location, uh, which was uh, uh, sponsored by uh, Central States Numismatic Society. And he made all of that information available to us. Um, and then in addition, we've, we've done some of our own scanning uh, that NNP is sponsored at various National Archives locations. So uh, Roger by Burdett is prominently or, or most typically worked at uh, College Park in Maryland. Uh, we have Nicole Fry uh, doing work at Philadelphia and uh, John Grafeo uh, scanned uh, literally the uh, entire numismatic holdings of, of Denver National Archives. Uh, there's also other uh, National Archives locations, uh, San Bruno, California, uh, Washington, D.C. Um, but the numismatic material uh, is, is really uh, focused on, on College Park in Philadelphia. And the way that was divided up is somewhat a, a matter of chance. Uh, this information all came over from the U.S. Mint in the 1920s um, and 1930s at the same time that the Mint was moving their, their Mint cabinet to the Smithsonian. Uh, their, their papers were also moved to uh, National Archives. So, uh, you know, as I said earlier, National Archives is unfortunately currently closed to uh, outside researchers, um, but uh, once that reopens, we'll, we'll get back in there. All right, um, so in, in addition to these uh, institutional sources and uh, organizational contributors, uh, we've also uh, sponsored uh, some content and uh, some scholarship directly. Um, so the uh, Coin Television Archives, uh, this was developed by uh, David Lazo, who has been going to numismatic conventions since the 1980s and uh, taping presentations, uh, taping historical pers perspectives with various speakers. 
Uh, it's really a, a one of a kind video record of numismatics for the period. And video really conveys uh, something that you just don't get any other way. So you can read stories about Walter Breen or John Ford, and that's fine. But when you actually see them on video, you get a much better feel for, you know, who these people were and kind of what made them tick. Um, so it's, it, it's something that you can't get any other way. So uh, it, it's great to have this collection in there. Um, and uh, this will be uh, a really important record going forward. Um, also, we've uh, worked to scan uh, Eric Newman's personal correspondence and research files. Um, we have a lot of work remaining to do in this area. Um, as I noted earlier, although the frontline portion of the collection was, was sold in 2018, uh, there are probably uh, another 50 boxes to work through of uh, Newman papers. Uh, the epidemic, unfortunately, has slowed some of that work, um, but uh, we are continuing to catalog it and, and scan it as we are able. Um, the Early Paper Money of America project um, is also on NNP now. So uh, Newman published five editions of the standard reference uh, Early Paper Money of America beginning in uh, 69, I believe, and continuing through 2008. And uh, that material is now on NNP. And in addition, it's been supplemented by the contents of the Newman sales. Um, so all of uh, Eric's colonial notes are now included in those image collections. Um, so for example, if you look at uh, uh, continental currency issue of a specific date. Uh, you can see the, con the content that was in uh, the early paper money reference book in, in addition to all, all the notes that appeared in the Newman sales. All right, and then in 2019, we started a Newman grants program, which uh, uh, provided uh, research assistance directly to authors. And uh, we've been able to incorporate uh, those uh, research results into the Newman portal. Um, so that's been a really nice way of uh, supporting worthy projects and at the same time making that research uh, widely available to Newman portal users. All right, uh, we have another uh, project. Uh, this one's not public facing, but it, it's something that, that's happening under the hood and worth noting. Uh, there are a lot of great numismatic websites out there. Um, just some really excellent content being developed, um, including dealer websites. Um, uh, dealers get interesting items, they, they write them up, and uh, it's a great store of information. So uh, Internet Archive has a project called the Wayback Machine, and it is their attempt to record the contents of everything on the web. Now, of course, that's physically impossible, um, but they have more than anyone else. And if you want to see what a site looked like 20 years ago, uh, you might be able to do it via the Wayback Machine because uh, they, they save that and uh, save multiple versions of web pages. So, We've been, uh, through Internet Archive, uh, we sponsor the archiving of a large number of numismatic websites. Uh, and, you know, a lot of these will go away over time. People go out of business, organizations dissolve. We're, we're keeping a record of uh, the, those websites. Um, so at some point, uh, we will index this material, make it available on, on Newman Portal. Um, in the meantime, uh, you can go directly onto the Wayback Machine and uh, access uh, this information. So it is available today. It's just not incorporated into uh, Newman Portal site directly. Um, now, one thing that uh, Wayback Machine is very uh, widely used for is opposition political research. 
Um, so if somebody, some politician says something or other uh, and they change it on their website, you know, a year later, the Wayback Machine can be used to go back and, and look at, you know, what, 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 was, what was actually there. Um, so it's uh, a useful record for that. All right. Um, now, in addition to <coughs> all the material on Newman Portal that's full view, uh, we have some material that is not full view. Uh, we call it restricted. Um, and uh, we do not provide full view for this material, but we do provide uh, search capability for it. Um, so you can uh, figure out that, okay, this, this document that I can't access contains uh, this, uh, this, th this search result. So you at least have a citation where you can go look for the documents. Um, uh, and, and again, uh, you know, this is just stuff that needs to be archived. So uh, Coin World, for example, from 1960 to date remains in copyright. Uh, we do not provide full view over that, but we do have it on the site and it can be searched. Um, so that's useful. Um, a lot of current reference books and stuff are still in print, still being sold. Um, so we don't have uh, full view permission for that material. Uh, <coughs> and uh, in, in terms of what we scan, we tend to pri prioritize it for things that we can show with full view because um, uh, full view is definitely preferable if we can get it. Um, but some things should be scanned regardless. Um, we are in the process of scanning uh, numismatic news right now. Um, and even though that won't be full view, again, it's just something that from an archival perspective, uh, there needs to be a digital copy and we're happy that we can do that. Um, with respect to uh, scanning in copyright material <clears throat> and making them searchable, uh, there was a, a famous court case, Authors Guild, Guild versus Google, which lasted about 10 years, uh, was a result of the Google Books project. Uh, Google began scanning all these books and making them searchable, even though the law was not really settled that they could do that, they just went ahead and did it anyway. Um, and then uh, that was uh, litigated over a long period of time, eventually went to the Supreme Court and uh, their ruling was that, uh, <clears throat> yes, you can scan in copyright material, you just don't make them full view and you can uh, provide snippets and, and search results from uh, that material. So uh, we're on uh, solid legal ground there. And uh, as I said, some things, simply need to be scanned, uh, something like Coin World. That's just the standard record of, of numismatics. And uh, we were able to, to get all that material scanned. <clears throat> all right, so let's talk about uh, what's happening at ANS. We've been working on this uh, Chapman Correspondence Project for a number of months. We've got about a dozen different candidates for what to do next. Uh, we recently were given uh, permission to scan all of the Glenn Dinning's auction sale catalogs. Um, I think that may be our next target there. Uh, that's a, a very extensive series. It's uh, <clears throat> on the order of, of Suthby's or, or Stacks for, for the same period, a very large number of catalogs. Um, so that, that's a candidate there. And then there are a number of uh, one-off archival items that uh, people have requested as well. So uh, we do maintain a list of, of what we want to do. And if you have requests, uh, send them in and we'll get them on the list. All right, so what's coming up? Uh, we have uh, two pallets of numismatic news in St. Louis. Uh, it's a complete set from the 1950s on up. Uh, furnished uh, by uh, Cliff Mishler and, and George Kuhay, uh, did all the work to make that happen. So a big shout out to them for providing that material to us. Uh, we've started scanning some of it. Our scanning bandwidth in St. Louis is limited right now. So we're going to be outsourcing uh, some of this work to Internet Archive to help us out with the scanning directly. Uh, we have uh, many, many boxes of Eric P. Newman research papers remaining um, on a great number of topics, particularly colonial numismatics, uh, 
Uh, so we'll uh, continue to work through them. And then we have uh, individuals who uh, continue to uh, send material into us, and that's always appreciated. Um, recently, we've worked with a collection of Irish political tokens, uh, which uh, documented the uh, Irish troubles uh, lasting approximately from uh, 1968 to 1998. This is a really interesting collection. It's not an expensive collection, um, but it's essentially all uh, UK and, and Irish coins that were counterstamped with uh, political uh, slogans or political insignia over that period, representing various political perspectives related to the Troubles. Um, and uh, it, it's uh, historically a very rich collection. Um, numismatically, not necessarily that valuable, but uh, I, I was uh, just fascinated with it just because of the history. Um, so in the, this uh, uh, gentleman, uh, Bruce Mosher, uh, built a collection of several hundred of these pieces and carefully documented where they came from and the history of each piece. Um, so it's a, a great record of uh, how that history was uh, reflected on these, these circulating coins. Um, the other big thing going under the hood right now is that we are uh, converting the NNP website to something called Samvera. So the website today is a uh, proprietary solution. Um, and what Samvera is, is a standard uh, open source repository solution for archives, libraries, and museums. And because there are a large number of universities and institutions uh, who work on Samvera, um, it gives us a, a broader basis for website developments in the future. And uh, Samvera will, because it's an open source project, it will continue to evolve. People will contribute toward it. They will put in new features into it that uh, we'll be able to absorb for very little cost. So uh, things you might see, for example, um, in the document viewer, um, it would be nice if uh, people could just enter transcription information uh, for uh, archival documents. So that's something that Sam Vera might offer just as a, a, a standard out of the box uh, solution. So, uh, as I noted, uh, Sam Vera is open source. So there's uh, many universities who are using it and contributing toward that software. Um, and, and we've engaged a, uh, a commercial firm, Notch 8, to assist us with that and uh, to port the existing site toward uh, Sam Vera. The look and the feel of the site will remain very similar, um, but the way the uh, information is, is stored underneath will we'll change a little bit. All right, and then uh, the NMP Symposium, uh, we intend to continue. I've, I've just been tremendously encouraged by the great content that I've seen over the last couple of days and the uh, audience engagement has been great. Um, we will be uh, putting all of these presentations out onto video and uh, making those available through Newman Portal. So uh, Leanna will be very busy the next uh, week or two, uh, post-processing all that video and uh, getting it into a form we can post on the site. So we look forward to uh, being able to add all that excellent content into our repository. And then uh, uh, going forward, we definitely want to do this event again. Um, I'm sure we'll have uh, a lot of lessons learned uh, coming out of this weekend, um, but as I said, uh, the content's been uh, quite good and, and we're sharing in a, in a more public way. All right, so with that, I'm going to wrap it up and uh, we will move towards uh, uh, taking questions. So uh, those can be entered in the chat and then I think uh, Leanna will uh, relate those questions to me. Yep, we have some good questions that have already been submitted. So let's see here. Um, are any other numismatic foundations or groups duplicating any of your efforts and how does that work out? Um, 
No, there really isn't anyone uh, doing anything like this. Um, and the, the, the easy answer why is because it's, you know, it, it costs some money to do. And uh, most numismatic organizations don't, don't have the resources um, to do that. Now, there are, there are a lot of other projects, worthy projects going on, but not, not necessarily the same thing. So ANS, for example, has these wonderful databases of uh, ancient coinage. Um, which uh, enables data scientists to look at this information in, in all sorts of new and interesting ways. Um, you know, our, our focus is more, our, our project is more library focused, uh, more on scanning documents. Um, so, you know, very complimentary. Um, but uh, in terms of uh, other people making uh, numismatic library information available on uh, this wide a basis, uh, yeah, it's, it's not happening. Mm -hmm. Okay, is there any, is there an introductory video that shows visitors to the portal tricks to searching the records so we can enjoy this important resource? Uh, there is, uh, and uh, as I recall, Leanna developed the video for us. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> we should probably put it on the front page so it's more accessible. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, from, okay, this is from one of our earlier presenters. Um, I believe he's on Friday, Tom Sparks, would the Short Snorter Project be a good candidate for an NNP partner? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, so uh, for those who didn't see it, uh, Tom gave an excellent presentation on uh, short snorters, uh, which are these uh, basically uh, records of various uh, military missions and aviation accomplishments. Um, on, on, on numismatic uh, objects, you know, typically uh, paper money. Um, so he really, the information he has right now is, is very much the basis for a book. So he might uh, 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 work with NNP to put that together in digital format. Um, and obviously we'll, we'll have his uh, video uh, archived on mm -hmm. our site at, after, after uh, the event. Uh, let's see, does NNP partner with the Smithsonian? Um, not formally. Um, we did, uh, they had a very uh, 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 interesting document, um, I'm trying to remember what it was, that they found in their library that was, uh, I think it was possibly a record of uh, metals or dyes from the 19th century that uh, we were able to uh, include on the site. Um, we've also, uh, we photographed um, uh, a great deal of uh, territorial gold uh, 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 from uh, the Smithsonian collection. Um, some of that is on the website. Um, so no, nothing formally ongoing, but we, we definitely have uh, interacted with them and uh, 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 presented some, some of the, their, their holdings on NNP. Mm -hmm. uh, is it possible to download a document from NNP? For example, can a PDF be downloaded? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I, I believe, uh, Leanne, in your demo video, uh, you showed that on there. Um, so yeah, PDF is, is sort of the, the lingua franca of uh, NNP. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, you can, any full view document on NNP, you can download in PDF format. Uh, with regard to CDN, what was or is the embargo period you noted? Yes, oh, okay. So, um, you know, a lot of uh, organizations that contribute uh, content toward NNP are operating on a subscription basis. So they're getting continued revenue from uh, their current publications. So it, it's simply not practical for them to put that out there for free. That's, um, that's just kind of a non-starter. So what a lot of groups do is uh, they'll say, uh, you know, I'll go back five years and you can uh, present anything before that, but uh, for the more current material, I'm gonna uh, keep that uh, embargoed and uh, not available digitally. So, and then that's what's happened with CDN. They gave us everything through, uh, I, I don't remember exactly what year, but there was uh, some three to five year period of uh, material that they held back. Odd, uh, let's, whoop, question disappeared. Let's get it back, there we go. Um, if a website stored on Wayback is later taken down by its webmaster, does it also go down on Wayback or does it survive? No, that, that's permanent. That's permanent. 
So, and that, that's the whole purpose of Wayback Machine is to, you know, uh, keep a record of these websites that, that disappear. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have access to the ISASC Equilibrium? We do. Um, we have most of it on there. Um, uh, Malcolm Mathias has been very uh, instrumental in, in getting us access to that. Um, I I believe we have most of it, probably not the, the last uh, recent years, um, but the period prior to that, um, I think we do. Okay, is there any independent backup of all the NNP material on archive.org? Right, so archive.org is thinking 500 years into the future. So <laughs> they, they have a, a, a nuclear proof copy of Internet Archive buried under the Rocky Mountains. Uh, they have copies in multiple countries, um, uh, just out of concerns for political stability. Um, so they're uh, as permanent as, as we know how to get in today's digital world. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Is information from Fort Worth dealer B. Max Mel being archived? Sure, so we have uh, all of the BMAX Mel uh, auction catalogs, 116 auction catalogs in the series are on there. Uh, Mel's Numismatic Monthly ran uh, 1908 to 1919 is on there. Um, what we don't have with Mel is a lot of archival information because he generated tons of promotional flyers and ads and correspondence. And I'm sure that, that stuff's all scattered. It's not all in one place. Um, if anyone has a, a cache of it, we'd, we'd love to add it. But that's, uh, other than that, his mainstream publications are all there. Would the NNP be interested in projects related to Canadian numismatics? Yeah, it, absolutely. Um, and uh, we've made some overtures to uh, Canadian numismatic organizations. And in fact, uh, uh, Wayne Omron was supposed to speak at one of the major Canadian events uh, recently that was... Uh, canceled by uh, uh, COVID. So uh, if anyone access, has access to uh, a, a large group of Canadian publications or uh, can secure permission for us to scan it, we're definitely interested in um, you know, pursuing that. Let's see. If I needed assistance at the National Archives with a specific numismatic issue, would you be able to provide assistance as to how to investigate in the archives? Yeah, um, definitely. And if you've never been there, it's it's definitely worth talking with uh, someone that has. Um, so you can contact us through our, our front page. Uh, if it's something that I can't answer, you know, I know other people who have uh, worked in National Archives um, and uh, might be able to, to assist. Um, I it, 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 just one my experience with archives is if you go in with a specific question, it's sometimes difficult to answer, but you will find something interesting. It may, may just not be what you're looking for, but uh, <laughs> uh, some specific things can be answered depending what it is. So yeah, feel mm -hmm. free to contact us. Uh, let's see, where'd it go? Uh, okay, and then you touched on this briefly, but someone's just asking for clarification. Um, have the symposium presentations been recorded and how can they be accessed? Right, so they have been recorded. Uh, Leanne will be doing uh, post-processing uh, busily for the next couple of weeks. And uh, <laughs> once they're available, we'll uh, get them on NNP and put a notice on the front page. Yeah, we'll also send out an email if you're on our email list um, and put up a post on social media. So if you're following our Facebook page or Instagram, you'll see the notification there as well. Excellent. So we'll be making that as clear as possible when they are up and ready to go. Um, let's see here. Got plenty of questions coming in and I can't find the one. Okay. Um, is there access to the TV shows Jean L. Henry did back in the 70s? Uh, I've never heard of that. Um, <laughs> the, uh, David Lazo was on something called the Financial News Network in the 1980s. We have some of that video, but Henry videos from the 70s I've never heard of. So, uh, mm -hmm. and they may not even exist anymore. Okay. Do you have any access to the National Banknote Database that Peter Huntoon and others have been developing? 
Yeah, so I, I've definitely been in, in contact with Huntoon about that. Um, it's something we're very interested in. Uh, he's done an amazing amount of work there. Um, there are some uh, questions about uh, ownership of the content uh, that need to be resolved. Um, but uh, yeah, we are aware of that. And uh, Huntoon's been a supporter of the site and uh, is uh, willing to help out as much as he can. Mm -hmm. Okay, we still have quite a few questions in the Q&A, so I'm gonna go ahead and do one more and then I have to hop off to run another presentation. Um, but Len, you can go ahead and keep going through them if you would like. Um, but one other one before I hop off, uh, what British resources have been archived and are you working with any British or Australian auction houses? Uh, we are working with uh, British auction houses. Uh, we recently added uh, uh, Baldwin of St. James um, and uh, are, are very interested in making connections with uh, British or Australian auction houses. Uh, so if there are any contacts out there that uh, can uh, facilitate that, let's, let's talk. Okay, then I'm going to hop off and you all can continue with the Q&A as long as you would like. All right, thanks, Leanna. Uh, yeah, the question here is anything uh, like your work being done for stamp collecting? Uh, absolutely, yes. We talked with, uh, I believe it's the American Postal Library uh, a few months ago, uh, and we were actually all getting set to, to share some content, but then the epidemic hit us. Um, but uh, they have something very similar to Newman Portal that uh, they are developing. It's not, on, not yet on the same scale just because they uh, haven't been able to ramp up uh, scanning operations the same way we have. Um, but yeah, it's very much the same idea, try and capture all the, the core uh, philatel philatelic numismatic resources out there. Um, and I believe that's open to American Postal Society members. Um, so yes, that's definitely happening. Uh, is NNP pursuing grants beyond uh, those from the Newman Foundation? Um, we have not done that. Um, uh, the Newman Foundation uh, likes uh, owning NNP, if you will, uh, and has been uh, very generous in, in their support. So there's uh, really not been a need to do that. Um, and uh, uh, we anticipate uh, continuing support from the Newman Foundation. All right, uh, follow up on the uh, Henry video question. Uh, he was involved uh, in the 60s with uh, Seattle Dealer and had a TV show um, on local TV in Seattle. Yeah, and you know, this is just something that, that's just been kind of lost to us. Um, it, in, in the 20s and 30s, there were a lot of radio programs about numismatics and uh, you see them in the pages of a numismatist or uh, other sources say, you know, somebody was speaking about uh, on this topic on, on the local radio. And of course it was just never recorded. So uh, not saved and uh, unfortunately, uh, a lot of that material is just just never recorded to begin with and, and completely lost. So that's uh, one of the reasons we're trying to uh, save as much as we can that, that we have access to today. Uh, another question, have you looked at the state archives? Uh, New York State Archives has a lot about uh, obsolete paper money. Um, yeah, and uh, a lot of state archives do. Um, for us to uh, get in and, and set up a formal program, there's uh, actually a fair amount of overhead. So a lot of this sort of thing tends to come in uh, from individual researchers who have gone to different institutions and scanned things. I, I know I personally have a lot of things from uh, Maryland State Archives. Um, uh, and as those are contributed, we'll, we'll add them. But uh, we have no, we haven't done anything uh, formal with New York State Archives. All right. I think that's it for the questions. So um, I'm going to break it off. We've got uh, Fred Swan coming up at 11 a.m. Eastern. Um, so I'm sure that'll be interesting. And a lot of other really uh, good programs today. So uh, thanks for attending and uh, we'll uh, see you in the later meetings today. <laughs>